and welcome to my channel. My name is Katie Turner and I am a spiritual coach and astrologer who loves to help you feel more empowered. So in this series, I really want to help you expand your spiritual vocabulary or at least get you curious about your spiritual vocabulary. What do I mean by spiritual vocabulary? Well, when we have certain words to describe something, we are able to get more in depth with that conversation. We're able to get more in depth with our understanding and our perception of what that is. For example, you may have heard the idea that Eskimos have, um, Eskimo cultures tend to have tons of words for snow. And the reason why is because they're around snow so much that they can see the different nuances in snow versus the English language that only has one or two words for, I think it's just one word for snow, um, that I know of is snow. And so, or slush, maybe, but anyways, we were able to, the, the cultures who are around snow have a bigger vocabulary, so they can describe more nuanced differences in snow, or we would say blanket snow, they can talk about different types of snow, um, different stages in the snow falling versus it already being there, and, and that allows them to describe a deeper picture and to understand the nature of snow on a better level, which is very important for them living in snowscape areas. So as we're working with energy, um, as we dive into the energetics, we spend so much time in the logical, you know, world where we're dealing with corporate and taxes and work and getting things done and all that good stuff. But we're kind of expanding into and starting to learn how to understand this energetic world, a law of attraction, manifestation, your vibrations, um, your vibe attracts your tribe, those kind of things. How are we feeling? We're diving into this new energetic vibration. And so as we do that, it's going to be important for us to really develop our vocabulary, really build our vocabulary and build nuances and be able to kind of make notice of these nuances because where we see them, where we can highlight them, where we can lean into those nuances, we can start to enrich our conversation with energy. We can start deepening our conversation with energy. And through that process, we deepen our experience with energy. We get to use it to our advantage um, when we want to in a better way. We can kind of have a better understanding of what energy wants us to move through and what we need to do when energy comes up. And so it's super, super exciting to be able to talk to you guys about this because it's super amazing to talk about the nuances of energy. So today I want to start with the energy of recovery versus maintenance. So a lot of times we talk about um, healing, right? You need to heal this, you need to heal that. I'm trying to heal this, I'm trying to move through this, I'm trying to get over this. Um, where we have gone through certain traumas, we've gone through certain experiences, and it leaves a mark. It leaves a wound. And it is now up to us, even though um, we weren't the ones who necessarily gave us that trauma. It is our responsibility to kind of meet this trauma and to heal this trauma so we can get our lives back. And so we can kind of take over and take charge of what we want for ourselves. And there's always purpose in the healing. There's always something you to learn about yourself. Um, there's always something you could pass on other people. So it's not pointless. But and also too, it feels good to heal. But the recovery stage is one thing. When you have just gone through a trauma or a bad experience, even if you don't consider it a trauma. So I like to kind of look at financial trauma as a trauma. If you have lived paycheck to paycheck for so long and you're so much in the survival mode financially, you're going to find yourself with financial trauma. You're going, to, maybe if that's you, um, you're going to find yourself dealing with this PTSD when it comes to spending money. It's going to trigger you to spend money. It's going to trigger you to buy new things. This is where you see celebrities um, who or lottery winners who make so much money and then never spend any of it, or they keep driving the same beat old, beat up old car. It's because they don't feel safe and comfortable no matter how much money they have in their bank to spend money so there's financial trauma it's not just the mental trauma or the emotional or the sexual or the physical there's lots of different kinds of traumas so anywhere you went through a hard situation where you kind of felt like you had to be in the survival mode versus a thrival mode that can kind of trigger those traumas and so when that happens after that happens after the um threat is over or stepping out of the threat. So if you're in an unhealthy relationship and you're trying to step out, that would be a time of recovery as well. Recovery energy is doing the initial healing work. It's doing the brunt work of the healing necessary um, to get you to a place where it's not only about healing. 
I don't, and we'll talk about this in a future video, I don't want to talk about, um, I didn't want to talk about healed versus healing and how we're not finished products, so we're not trying to aim to be healed, we're trying to aim to find healing, which aim, we're aiming to find that healing energy, and in recovery, it's just about getting enough of the healing in that we need to, so we can start being more exploratory, exploratory into our world, where we can explore more of our world, where we can explore more of the possibilities we have for ourselves. So going back to the example of the financial trauma, um, so say you are a spiritual entrepreneur, this is something I work with a lot, and you really struggle to get your business up and running in the very beginning. And so that kind of left you afraid. Um, and so once your business starts doing well, once you start shifting things and kind of finding your spot and things start kind of rolling in, you are scared to trust it. You're scared to um embrace it and lean into it but then you do the work you do the recovery work to acknowledge that what you went through was temporary it was meant to teach you a lot about what you, was important to you um how you wanted to run your spiritual business and what that looked like for you and also too so you can dive into your money stories so you can dive into your your vibrations of how you feel about money so you can check into how you're attracting it um so once you do that recovery work and once you start kind of start the process of letting things go and healing and acknowledging that it was the temporary time that you're safe now you can lean into this that things do change for the better um that you can accept this that you are in the abundance vibration and that's not going to go away anytime soon once you kind of do the recovery work to lean into that you can then just start living your life but what comes after that is the maintenance so this is where people generally kind of say like i thought i already healed that I thought I already moved through that because I thought they did it all in the recovery stage. However, we still have maintenance work to do. So if you are someone who went through financial trauma, no matter where you're at, every time you up level financially, you'll probably have to do some maintenance work to dive into those beliefs, the old beliefs you had, the old experiences you had, and let some of those go and kind of heal from those fears. Because each time we do, it takes it on a deeper level. So if you're moving through something, just know that Recovery is one stage, but also too, after recovery comes maintenance. Um, you don't want to neglect the process. It's not about a, a one and done healing process. It's not a one and done fixing process. It's something where you give yourself space and time to truly heal on a deeper level and then give yourself permission to kind of keep that maintenance up where you can check in daily with if you want or weekly or monthly how you feel or whenever something kind of happens, whenever something gets triggered. This is where journals are super effective because... If you're constantly journaling about how you feel, when you're feeling something off, you know it and you can take that to the journal. Anytime you're feeling triggered, um, a lot of times we'll be triggered in a way and we'll just kind of process it and just put it in, put it aside in our head. That's not what we're meant to do. We're meant to kind of look at that trigger and say, why am I being triggered by this? We don't realize we're doing it half the time either. That's kind of the funny thing is we do all of this subconsciously because we have these beliefs that we hold and of course... To us, they're fine because they're they're the normative beliefs we've had for so long. And so when we're trying to change those beliefs, we can't flag them yet as not good beliefs until we actually start noticing, okay, what kind of feeling do I not want to have? And so every time I see that feeling in myself, let's look at what I was thinking about. Um, so when you're in the maintenance mode, do just that. Whenever you feel that ugh, gut feeling that kind of reminds you of where you were before you went through the recovery phase, um, stop and sit with yourself. And do some energetic work and, and journal and dive into it and see what that's about and see what you can move for that because that's the general maintenance. Just like we take a car, um, the car is built and then it gets maintenance. Um, if a car gets in a wreck, it gets repaired and then it gets maintenance down the road too. You don't stop getting oil changes if your car gets in a wreck and you have to fix it. You still get those oil changes and so it's important to still give yourself that maintenance work. So just know that if you're someone who's going through some trauma, if you're someone who's went through trauma and you're finding stuff resurfacing or if you're coming out of the recovery phase, just know that it's a, it's a process. <laughs> it's a cycle. Things will continue to come up for us to deal with on a different level. Um, so just embrace that and don't beat yourself up for that. Allow it to happen. Allow yourself to see these things and then give that the attention you need when you can. Um, it's a super, super effective way to love yourself and to acknowledge the process of being human because it's not one and done it's not and that's something that i think we definitely expect out of ourselves so when you're in the energy of recovery embrace it when you're in the energy of maintenance embrace it but it's acknowledge that the maintenance is there for you um and available for you to use it's that's the thing too it's it's not just oh you have to maintain this it's you get to maintain it and then you get great results because 
Like with a financial example, when you're up leveling, say you're about to sign a new client in your business and, and they're going to be a big ticket client um, or they have a big reputation and they're going to be able to kind of bring you more people, but you're nervous and you're scared about that. Being able to recognize that you can do maintenance and do the healing work and shift your vibrations is so much better than just being stuck with where you're at and kind of feel like you have to have a cap on growth. Um, so step into that, lean into that. So thank you guys so much for joining me today on this video about energetic vocabulary. Let me know your experiences with healing versus recovery, or excuse me, recovery versus maintenance. And then also too, if you want to work with me, I will leave my information down below. Thank you so much and be sure to like, share, and subscribe.